And here we are. It's almost like we were teleported by Lockjaw all the time, dog, through the Speed Force. That's right. Through whatever crossing, other, crossing companies there. Crossing companies there to bring Boom. you another edition of. Comic Shirt Smell Good. From here in Xanadu Comics in Seattle. Yes. We've given, we, I think we lost Morgan somewhere in the Speed Force. He'll be back Th Yeah, that, that was the pool near, or in Hawaii. We think that he's still there. I don't know if he managed to catch his plane. He might have still been drunk. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so let's begin with this week's new comic book picks of the weeks. Um, I'm going to start with Generations number one, The Iron. This is the mm. latest in the series of adventures that teams up former and current heroes who share the same code name. This being Tony Stark and Ruby Williams, Iron Man and Iron Heart, through, as we learned last week in the finale of Secret Empire, the vanishing point. Which actually makes sense now. It really makes a lot say, of sense now. I kind of want to go back and reread cool. all the other generations things. Yeah. Well, this is, of course, leading up to Marvel Legacy. Um, this is, of course, in the vanishing point. It takes these two heroes at different times, so Riri actually gets to meet her mentor, Tony Stark, but the big question is, is at what point in Tony Stark's life will it be? Yeah. And there's some big supernatural guest stars and supernatural villains who have been kind of, through, through Tony's kind of, some of his big storylines of way, way, way past, because Marvel Legacy is about the future, but it's also for old school fans like me, That's right. obviously a really old fan compared to <laughs> you, uh, who remembers the stuff altogether. So Brian Michael Bendis continuing his Marvel Legacy with oh, is Iron that Man. Yeah. It is. And uh, Marco Rudy, yes, some really, cool, really cool art. So, Very trippy. Um, big if you're a big Iron Man fan and you want to know some what's going to set the stage for Marvel Legacy coming there this month, this is definitely a big one to get. Yeah. Um, let's see. And my first book this week is the very awesome. Black Beetle from Francesco Francavilla. Uh, this is the second series, Kara Bocek. Um, this is fantastic pulp adventure, and just like most good pulp stuff, the bad guys in this one are, of course, Nazis. Um, but this is the stories collected from Dark Horse Presents, which were just a few pages at a time, um, and now all of them together at once is really quite a treat. Uh, Francavilla doing the writing, drawing, everything. This is kind of a one man show, um, but really, really fun stuff if you like The Shadow or you're enjoying. Uh, Lobster Johnson or you know you like the Phantom stuff like that um, this is a great hardcover from Dark Horse There's a bunch of cool pinups um, lots of uh, cool lobby cards like the old 30s stuff that he's a big fan of so brand new my latest pick is Royals and whether you're a fan of the Inhumans maybe you saw the Inhumans preview at IMAX this weekend oh did that come out it did come out yeah. and did you uh, see? I did not see um, I was out enjoying the Seattle summer I could before it turned to ash and, and it, that's and, outside now the nuclear outside now. summer literally we have like <laughs> ash falling like snow in Seattle right yeah. now yeah um, but and the Inhumans the TV series is coming but if but if you're a fan of uh, what's going on with the Inhumans right now Al Ewing, I mean, that name just says it all right there. He's awesome. Uh, the royal family's in deep space in Royals, and they're with Novar, a.k.a. Marvel from Grant Morrison. He's leading them out to try to restart their race, to find the mystery of their race. And, of course, um, Maximus tricked them all, as he always does, and he's with them. And uh, what's cool is, if you remember what was so cool about the old Star Trek, the Gorn, only one episode, we only once saw one Gorn, but it's awesome. But there's these new le reptilian villains, it's like, it's like the Gorn of Marvel. Cool. And I'm, I'm in. I mean, there's lots of them because it's a comic book, so you have the budget to do as many as you want. Absolutely. So it's awesome. We also have the latest issue with Black Bolt and Inhumans Once a Future King, so there's a lot of Inhuman love here at Xanadu this week. You would think that they had a TV show coming out. Um, my next pick is from Lion Forge. This is a uh, last issue of the miniseries Claudia and Rex. This is by uh, Ulysses Farinas, Eric Fritas, and Daniel Irizarry, the team that recently relaunched the uh, Judge Dredd book for IDW. And Fritas and Ulysses Farinas did uh, the most amazing Motro for Oni. Um, and this is a really cool all ages supernatural fantasy book uh, about a young girl who, uh, along with her sister and her mother, go on this big cosmic journey. Um, that uh, where she's bestowed with the powers of all these different gods, and um, so it's got it's lots of magic, lots of occult stuff. But at the core of it, it's about the fact that um, this young girl cannot get over the death of her father, and neither can her mother. And her mother is kind of stuck in this like weird time thing where she's like reliving the best moments of her and her husband, and not taking you know not living in the present and kind of taking care of her daughters, um, which kind of leads to the uh, culmination of this heartfelt quest. So this is very, very cool. We have all three issues. Highly recommend. 
My next pick is The Astonishing X-Men. This is the latest chapter in a big epic by Charles Soleil. He's joined by different artists each time. Yeah. This time, Ed McGinnis is on this chapter. And this continues the X-Men's big fight in the astral plane with the Shadow King. And the yeah. return, we think it's the return of... I don't want to spoil it. You just need to be reading this if you're a huge fan of the X-Men. Um, because it's the astral plane. Who knows what could be going on. You have on. no well, idea. This really focuses on Old Man Logan fighting inside the astral plane. Kind of, you know, with such a physical guy, how does he cut loose, so to speak, as he always does. Yeah. And um, just really twisted. Meanwhile, there's something going on in the real world as stuff's going on in the astral plane. Uh, it's also, so like he's doing a lot of different layers and layers and a lot of really cool stuff. And your astral plane, you can do anything. Yeah. And Ed McGinnis is great. It's all big and chunky, and there's ninjas. There's a bunch of ninjas from Wolverine. Because what? Wolverine all astral ninjas. ninjas. Astral ninjas. There you go. Um, some more Marvel love here this week. This is the new big fall event, Venomverse. Uh, you can tell, obviously, lots of Venoms. This is kind of like Separation Anxiety from the 90s, um, which was one of the best video games of superhero stuff ever, ever. Um, but it was a fun storyline. It got to see all sorts of different rainbow-colored symbiotes. Um, this one sees Eddie Brock, who has finally been reunited with the symbiote, uh, kind of start losing it, and the symbiote goes and infects other people. And you have Captain America symbiote, you got uh, X-23, you got Old Man Logan, uh, Venom, or, or uh, uh, Flash Thompson uh, Venom, Jack-O-Lantern, Doctor Strange, anybody you could think of has basically been Venomized. Um, Cullen Bunn and Iban Coelho bring you uh, this new tale hot off of the heels of Edge of Venomverse and we also have a special epilogue to that this week, the Venomverse War Stories. Uh, oh, and sorry, we did get the Stoko issue of Venomverse back in as well for those of you that missed it. I have my final pick as a double hit for actually my, it is my last one, I can't believe it's already got, got Boom. it's a double hit of Star Wars. First of all we've got Star Wars Captain Phasma who in tradition of Boba Fett is one of the biggest like Hyped? I had no idea. Super hyped. Yeah. People love it, but then they have this weird ending for the characters, like like you know Boba Fett was such a badass that yeah. he ends up in the Sarlacc. Yeah. Um, but of course, uh, what happens to Captain Phasma after the events? This is actually a lead up to um, the Last Jedi. So this is um, Kelly Thompson and um, Marco Cicchetto. Marco Cicchetto, who did yeah. a lot of the amazing Star Wars preludes before, and he does the art on this. So great story. And then. Something for all ages. This is Star Wars Adventures. This stars Ray. All ages. It's from IDW. All ages. And it's even if you're a fan of, um, actually, as you can see, there's a little bit of everything from all the different generations. And if you're a fan of all those weird, crazy creatures that hung out in Jabba's palace, and they, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, you can yeah. do any kind of sound effect you want. Yeah. You'll want to pick up those two cool stories. One starring Ray and a backup story, kind of with kind of Jabba's crowd. Yeah, with Obi Wan and his massive beard. He's got this beard that just kind of comes out, which is very cool. Um, my next pick here is <clears throat> Space Riders, finally, number three, uh, from Black Mask. This is, um, uh, Alexis Sarit, Fabian Rangel Jr., bringing you the very ins definition of insanity. This literally reads just like Jack Kirby Blacklight posters, and you put them all together with giant whales, um, and other huge giant sea space anemones and shit like that. Um, this has been really, really fun, uh, if not a little slow, but it's absolutely worth it. Uh, Captain Peligro and the crew are back to cause more mayhem and try to survive. Um, and I actually have one more pick here. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Kind of slide it in. Ooh. Absolutely one of my favorite, favorite books that are out right now. Extremity by Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, this is hands down my favorite image book. This is like the best image book since Profit ended. Um, and this is a very, very personal tale uh, about a young artist named Thea whose clan has been attacked by another warring clan uh, and she was uh, removed, her arm was removed moved and she's basically lost her very identity she's unable to kind of make art anymore um, and she's now have to be drafted uh, along with her father and her brother uh, the surviving members of her family into this kind of uh, real epic of revenge and it's this great kind of Mad Max fantasy world uh, a little bit of Miyazaki where there's all these different clans that exist on like floating planes um, there's lots of cool old world technology there's badass uh, robots there's giant praying mantis 
mantises. Um, I just I cannot stress enough how just visually visceral and emotionally hard hitting this book is. This collects the first half of the series, one through six. It is a 12 issue limited. Um, but Daniel Warren Johnson is perhaps one of the best people making comics right now. Um, and I couldn't be happy, more happy to have this uh, available to sell to everyone. Um, I think that's it, neighbor. Yeah. On a final I, I, note, let's, yeah. let's say a special happy 25th anniversary of Batman the Animated Series. Absolutely. This is the series that gave us Harley Quinn. Yeah. And if you come in, venture to the store, there's lots of cool stuff based on the Animated Series. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. But um, what a great, what a, 25 I mean, years. Dude, I, I rewatch that at least once a year. Usually Favorite around episode? Christmas. Uh, I gotta go with the uh, uh, the Bullock episode right near Christmas where it's all Bullock and he's getting a hit put on him by the what he thinks is a mob boss and he's gotta reluctantly you know ask uh, Batman for help and shit. But mine's the Laughing Fish. Yeah. A the whole the fish. entire water supply fish supply is Jokerized. Yeah. So why don't you hit us back? Hit us back on the when yeah. See let us know. on Twitter or Facebook. Let us know your favorite Batman animated series. And um, we're going to get out of here because I know Morgan's going to come back next week because he's so disappointed he didn't get to do the special effects thing. I know. He, would, he lives for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.